did not like math growing up. I love math now. I, I see how it works. Geometry is my favorite because it actually applies so much to clothing design. And you also have to think three-dimensionally to design a lot of this stuff. Especially if you're doing sleeves, you need math for that. So it really is unavoidable. <laughs> um, if you're going to design, you need to, to embrace math. My name is Keenan Goldsmith, also known as Knitting Bartender. I am a fiber artist. I knit and design sweaters. Literally, I wanted to smash together two words that meant nothing to a lot of people, but a lot to me, because I do craft cocktail uh, bartending, and I also have a passion for knitting. A lot of them do cross over, because I think that there are so many different nuances in bartending and also knitting that you can very easily go down the rabbit hole and you're always learning. So that's why I called myself that. I wanted to leave myself open too to be able to give classes on knitting and on bartending. I didn't want to pigeonhole myself. <laughs> I have been knitting for 30 years. So, you know, passion for that came first. And then the bartending, actually, it was an accident. I was in Chicago taking all of my courses that I needed um, to try to qualify to get a doctorate in physical therapy and that didn't work out so I came back to New Orleans and spoke to my uh, best friend's husband and said I need a job and he goes well I just opened a bar in the French Quarter do you want to bartend and I went sure and I, I had no idea how to bartend I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a smoked old-fashioned really easy recipe uh, dates back to the late 1800s and there are a few different ways to make it but today we're gonna make it the way I like uh, we're gonna infuse it with hickory smoke so we're gonna start off with two ounces of bourbon. All right, once you have your bourbon in the glass, you're gonna to wanna to grab a few dashes of Peychaud's bitters. Traditionally, you would use Angostura. I like Peychaud's. So we're just gonna throw a few dashes in there. And then after that, we are going to add Luxardo Maraschino Cherry. These are awesome. So let's put two, so you got those in there and then we're gonna use a bit of fresh orange. There you go, you're gonna plop that straight into here and then you're gonna grab your muddler and you're gonna macerate the orange and the cherry. All right, you've noticed I have not put any ice in here. I don't wanna dilute it before you actually get your drink. So that's good to go. I give that a little bit more of a stir. Here comes the fun part, the smoke. Before we put the drink in, we're gonna add the smoke. You wanna go ahead and light your wood chips and at the same time, turn on your smoker. Get a nice cloud up in there. And the reason that you're doing this is you're actually infusing this smoke straight into your drink. Grab a funnel, pour your drink in. All right, awesome. So once you have your drink in, you can go ahead and close this up. And you just give it a few swirls. Let it sit in there. While that's going on, you're gonna add your ice to your drink. And this should be ready to go. And that's your smoked old fashioned. Cheers. That's really good. <laughs>
you know, I kind of was a little bit more interested in knitting. Uh, when I hit 18, that's when I discovered cable work, which is pretty awesome. And I just really got into Aaron sweaters and Aaron knitting. Um, it wasn't until last year that it really hit me that I wanted to like make this a business. I never thought that it, I could do it. And, there was just something that said, go for it, and I did. Uh, my favorite thing to knit is sweaters. That's what I'm known for, and the more complicated, the better. It takes me two weeks to knit a sweater that's in worsted weight wool, which is a little bit heavier. If it's fingering weight, it takes me four weeks. Yeah, and there's a big difference when you're switching yarn weights. The thinner it is, the longer it takes to knit because you're using smaller needles. For me, the most rewarding thing is seeing a concept that I've like mulled over actually turn into a finished product. And to think, I designed that, I made, and even if I didn't design it, I made that. Like that's, you take sticks and string and make stuff. Like how does this work? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. The most important thing you need to knit is a couple of knitting needles, one pair, and some yarn, and just the curiosity to learn, honestly. So uh, the first known records of knitted garments date back to the ancient Egyptians. There are actually uh, samples of socks uh, that you can find in museums. Knitting uh, was a necessity at one point. Now it's more of something that we do for fun. I think because of mass production, people take for granted um, that it does take a lot of time to create these you know, finished garments and that they are made with love for certain people who are knitworthy that, uh, you know, usually family members or friends. So next time you ask somebody random, hey, can you knit this for me? <laughs> they may say no, but they will always offer to teach. That's one thing I do when someone asks me to knit something for them, I will take as much time as it takes for free to teach them. When it comes to designing, I try to keep everything in one notebook. Uh, and I'm also using spreadsheets. So between my computer and my notebook, I'm pretty organized uh, in that respect. As far as my yarn stash goes, I've got a lot of yarn. <laughs> uh, my biggest influence in life is Ralph Lauren for design. Uh, he uses a lot of English country fashion and that's just really, you know, influenced what I do. So when I put together like a vest, or a full sweater or a cardigan, I'm not just looking at the one piece. I'm thinking about what shirt's gonna go with it, what tie, the hat, all of it. I want it to look perfect, especially when I take the photograph for that PDF pattern. The first thing that I'm doing is drawing out my schematic, and what that means is it's actually like a cartoon kind of like drawing. And I write down all of my measurements that I want and from there I have to figure out how that motif can be repeated all the way around without breaks or if it can't be done I may need to add a different kind of stitch pattern over to the side to make that work because I have to grade my patterns from a small sometimes up to 3XL and that doesn't always work where it's continuous. Um, so it takes me about four days to write a pattern. I go through a lot of marble notebooks uh, because I like to handwrite a lot of it. I recently switched to spreadsheets, which I use through Google Docs um, and also pages on my computer. Uh, so that's kind of made things a little bit easier. But um, after I have written the pattern out, the other thing that I do directly after is I have to knit up a squ uh, swatch. So that is um, a sample that's about four inches by four inches square. Uh, you wet block it, which means you, you wash it and then you have to let it dry because the fibers do shrink. From there, I have to measure how many stitches equals an inch and that goes into the gauge. And then after that, I knit the sample. So four days for the pattern to write it and then about two weeks to knit the sample. And then another two weeks to go back and realize that maybe you made some mistakes in your pattern from knitting the sample and just fixing that. From there, it usually goes to a tech editor. They'll look over it. And then after that, it goes over to a sample knitter or plural sample knitters. I know a lot of people like to send it to more than one and then it goes to market. So it's a pretty long process. 
So if you're just starting out knitting, uh, you probably want to pick up some worsted weight yarn. That's a pretty good weight to work with. I would get some size, anywhere from size uh, five to size seven US needles to knit with. Um, it's just gonna be easier for you. Anything thinner, it's going to knit up very slowly. It's a little bit more instant gratification when you use worsted weight. You can finish a project faster. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a hat today. Designing does not have to be difficult if you start with a small project. So let's do a really simple ribbed hat. We're gonna add a few colors in there. You can do them in any order that you want. It's a choose your own adventure. But let's start with some math first, which everyone hates. <laughs> it's really easy, I promise. So we're gonna start off with 80 stitches for our hat and we're using worsted weight wool. So it's a little bit heavier wool, which is what this sweater is made out of. And so, let's see, we cast on 80 stitches. Then we're gonna break that down for our decreases later. So let's do 10. I'm writing the number 10 out eight times. For each one of these 10, when we get to the top of our hat, when you're decreasing, we're going to knit eight and then knit two together. And do that straight across for one row. All right. And then we're gonna knit a row. And then we're gonna knit seven, knit two together. Knit a row. Knit six, knit two together. Knit a row. Sensing a theme here. Knit five, knit two together. Knit a row. And you keep doing that until you get down to knit two together. And then at that point, you'll have uh, whatever number of stitches left. It's usually anywhere from eight to 10 stitches. You'll take a tapestry needle and you'll thread your remaining yarn through all of those stitches. And then you're gonna pull it real tight and pull the yarn inside the hat and weave it in. That part is really easy. All right, let me finish this up real quick. Knit four, K2 together. All right, that's our pattern right there. Looks really sloppy, but it's gonna produce a really nice result. So let's start off with some cream colored yarn. Materials that you are going to need besides your yarn are knitting needles, circular pair, and we're using a size five US. So we'll write that down for our pattern. And we're gonna do what's called a long tail cast on. So you'll want a nice bit of yarn. <laughs> And then you're gonna make a slip knot. This part is really easy. We're gonna take the yarn, pass it over two fingers, pass it around, and then we're gonna grab in between and pull through. There's your slip knot. Put that on the needle. And you're gonna pull, cinch that yarn in. Great. This is the fun part. And a lot of people get intimidated by this. This is called a long tail cast on. You go and point your thumb up in the air, point your index finger this way, and you're just gonna put it in between the yarn tail and the rest of the yarn right here. So just put it in between, use these three fingers to grab this yarn right here, and then we're gonna pull down like this. And it makes this cat's cradle looking deal that you see here. All right, the next thing you're gonna do is go up through your thumb, around this part, Throw the thumb over, come down, and do that again. Up, around, over. A couple more times. Up through the thumb, around, over. And we want a total of 80 stitches, so let's get that on there. Two, three, four. At 24 so far. Woo, 80 stitches. Okay, here's the next part. I'm gonna take your left hand needle after you've slipped all these stitches up here and you wanna add a stitch marker. 
If you don't have a stitch marker, that's no biggie. You can actually use a piece of contrasting yarn and just cut a little piece off and you're gonna make a knot. The only reason you need the stitch marker is so that you know how many rows you've done every time you go around. So you're gonna grab your working yarn, go through the first stitch, and you're on. Go in through the front to back, wrap the yarn around, pull through, pull the stitch off of the left needle. Same deal, in through the front to the back, wrap the yarn around, go through. You're just gonna keep doing this for five rows. After you've gotten your five rows done, then you can add the next color, whichever you like. I kinda like this color next. And then I think I might like this color next. Maybe this one. And then this one. Biggest thing to remember when you're doing anything um, as far as knitting in the round is to make sure that your knitting is not twisted. There's a rib right here. You wanna make sure that that rib is facing the inside of your circular needle. If you see it twisted at any point, it's probably not gonna be a very cool looking hat. <laughs> All right, so we're still working on our first round here. A hat like this, if you're uh, intent on getting it done in a day, should take you three hours. Really not too bad. Okay, so I just finished row one, we're approaching row two. And what I'm gonna do is take the tail, the yarn that we used to cast on, and I'm going to make a knot around the working yarn so you don't have that big gap at the edge of your hat. It looks bad. So if you're new to knitting and you find it kind of intimidating or you don't know where to start, the best place would be to go online. I know lots of people who have just started out knitting and they've learned from going online YouTube videos and they've tackled projects that I haven't yet because there are so many techniques out there. It doesn't matter how long or how short of a time you've been doing this kind of fiber art. Just tackle the project. Row two. All right, almost done with row three. Once we get to the fifth row, we're gonna change our color. One thing that I really appreciate about fiber arts, knitting specifically, is that this is a portable uh, art. You can take it anywhere. Actually, you can throw it in a bag, you can walk down the street and do it. I do that all the time. Uh, any project that you have, just throw it in a sack and take it, you know, get out of the house, get some fresh air, go to the park, uh, go meet your friends. That's what I do. A lot of people in the fiber community are cool with going out, as long as we can take our knitting with us. New Orleans inspires me through its culture, its music, its food, the intangibles that, you know, unless you've actually grown up here, <laughs> you don't really understand. Um, we love life. We realize it's short. We are going to eat what we want, drink what we want. We party hard. And I think that that has definitely motivated me to want to have my own business, you know? There are several motivators, but that was definitely one. My favorite part about New Orleans is our joie de vivre, which means that we enjoy life. We're gonna do five rows of the gray, then we're gonna go into this natural color, kinda looks like a sable, and then we're gonna finish off with this color. And then we're probably gonna wind up going back to this cream color again as the main part of our hat where we start doing our decreases. That was that knit eight together, knit two together, knit one row, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, with alternating, just knitting the rows. This is gonna go a lot faster now, guys. Like I said, this is about a three hour project for you if you're just sitting and knitting. y'all 
Here's the finished product. Let's see. Check it out, what do you think? So I kind of played around with the stripes. Again, you can choose any order that you want. Really nice snug fit. And it's 100% wool, so you know it's gonna be really warm. I like it. Some key things for me really has been um, reaching out to other people in the fiber community and building a strong core group of people who will be very supportive. As a whole, the fiber community is, but it's nice to have a couple people who will kind of help guide you in the right direction. So, you know, I started a Facebook group, um, just inviting fiber artists to join and, and share and really tapped into that community and it really paid off. Building a group from five people to 6,800 people uh, was not what I expected. I just started off, you know, saying, well, I want to start a group where people can promote themselves if they are looking to have a business. Um, and also where they can teach, they can learn, they can be any skill level. So, you know, whatever it is that your skill, your talent, your hobby is, join groups, start talking to people. Because I can tell you, your whole world opens up when you start to interact with communities that share the same interest. Starting a business without any money is simple. <laughs> not really, it's not really. I'll tell you how I did mine though. Um, I didn't have any money, so what I decided to do was I started a t-shirt line. I had a logo, uh, I put myself out there on social media, every day I was trying to post something about my work, and also in between posting about what I was doing, you know, just doing quick advertisements. You don't want to kill people with, I've got t-shirts, or, or whatever it is that you're selling, um, because Showing it more is not going to make them more interested. It's going to make them more, more aggravated. So you, you definitely want to use strategic marketing um, when you are doing stuff like that. I can tell you I personally watched a lot of YouTube videos from people who are way younger than me um, that just you know blew me away with you know all of the different ways that they were generating income and it just took me a little while to, to figure out how I could apply that to myself. You know, so turning your hobby into a business is, uh, it's a lot of work. What I recommend for anyone wanting to do this is do not take your foot off the gas. You will be working every day, but if it's something you're passionate about, it won't feel like work. So I can tell you personally, when I wake up in the morning, that's what I'm thinking about and always in a positive way. What can I do today? What can I get accomplished? So the products that I sell are t-shirts, tanks, and hoodies, which I uh, do through an online marketplace. I also have a second marketplace that I'm able to post PDFs of my knitted patterns that people are able to purchase and then uh, knit from. This is actually one of them um, that I'll be dropping this fall. Uh, there's a website where fiber artists can post their PDF patterns and uh, you know, sell them online. That's something I'm interested in doing. I have two designs so far that I can publish. I enjoy selling patterns online because it's easily, easily accessible to people. I'm able to also translate the patterns into several different languages so I have a further reach around the world so that it's more accessible to people. It's just, it makes more sense. It's like passive income, honestly. The setup takes a long time, the design part, uh, but the payoff is pretty nice. So my inspiration comes from everywhere for design. Uh, it really is a lot of visual, like actually seeing product or seeing something that reminds you of, of something in your past, maybe childhood. Uh, knitters are kind of fuzzy, warm people. We're squishy, right? And so <laughs> Uh, a lot of my inspiration comes from resource books that I use of cables, looking at a lot of historical sweaters from uh, Scotland, Ireland, and France. You'll also see uh, cable knit sweaters. Um, and, and just looking at what's available too for fibers, uh, as far as color goes and, and you know, uh, fiber content, whether it's wool, it's alpaca. I love alpaca. It is stronger than cashmere, but feels just as soft. 
You know, I've never gotten a chance to meet an alpaca, but I do want to meet one specific one. Her name is Ruby Moon, and she is up in Canada. I actually have a sweater that is made from her, her fleece. Uh, and she seems like a sweetheart. I've never met an alpaca before, though. Yeah, a lot of people go into the fiber art specifically knitting because it is super relaxing and uh, it's addictive. That's the scary part. <laughs> Once you start, I don't, I don't think you'll want to stop.